Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day four of the August Legal Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about these problems. Today's problem is 139, word break. Let's take a look and see what's up. Uh, given a string S and a dictionary string of word dict, return true if S can be segmented into space, separated sequence of one or more dictionary words. Okay. Note that the same word can be used. Okay, so I mean, I think the... Um, I think the, the problem with these problems is that there's always going to be a little bit of um, a little bit of a mind reading, to be honest. I, I and I kind of vaguely remembered either this one or like Word Break Two or whatever they have. Right? Is that you know um, they don't tell you the edge like the constraints are constraints, but they don't tell you the the edge cases so that. Um, I mean, like, maybe it's not this one, though, so maybe I'm just, like, kind of saying wrong things, but, but one, one of these kind of have, like, a weird, like, worst-case scenario in which, like, if you add an if statement, it fixes it, so then it's like, well, what are you actually testing, right? Um, like, some sort of mind-reading thing. So I don't, I don't remember if this is that one, but in a generic way, you can think, uh, this one, you know, um, yeah, you can just think about dynamic programming. Uh, which is kind of, mm, or well, that's the way that I go to directly. But um, what is S again? Oh, so there's a thousand words. S is the word they were looking for. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So eh, which is kind of awkward, but it is what it is, right? Yeah, because for each of those length to a thousand and then you do eh. so like that's about six million like if you do all the calculations in the worst case so we'll see how, we'll see how that goes but but the, the the actual recursion the actual you know kind of what we were talking about the last couple of days if you've been you know chilling with us is that this idea of brute force and then just you know going through um that's basically the idea behind this is that basically we're we're looking at us, uh, uh, can break maybe? Uh, we're looking for us the suffix of S and we, we try to calculate whether the suffix can be implemented, right? Uh, can be, can be, uh, segmented, I guess, break into the same word. So, so yeah, so we can definitely do that. So here we, can, we use index as a, as a proxy for suffix because you know, this is the, uh, the index uniquely identifies the suffix of s of, uh, uh, of s. So we can do that. So if index is equal to n, then we return true because that means that the the suffix contains zero characters, and we can return true. Otherwise, I guess we just brute force, uh, or maybe even for word in word dict, right? Uh, if s of index starts with a word, then we can, uh, and maybe like, you know, n can break index plus uh, length of word, then we return true, because we want to early terminate, otherwise we return false. And that should be pretty much good. We can do can break zero. Um, the only thing that, of course, as we usually go is, uh, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Maybe I'm off by one or something. Mm, always way funky with these. Uh, with these things. Mm. Oh, 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 I am dumb. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so obviously one character cannot be the start. Uh, you, you, silly mistake. But yeah, um, and of course, if you kind of just do it this way, of course, it'll it branches out way too often, so you're going to terminate. So the idea here is just memorization. Well, how many how many possible inputs are there? Well, there can only be n suffixes or n plus one suffixes because that's just the definition of it. You know, like you have zero character suffix, you have one character two dot dot dot, and so yeah. So which also another way of saying it is that zero can go from zero to n, and so we can just cache all the possibilities, right? So. As cash, you can do uh, n plus one maybe. Uh, I always, I always add a little bit more just for you know, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so I don't have to worry about it. But yeah. Right. Otherwise, uh, oh, well, that would have been awkward. We're like, wait, why? Is, why does this break? Yeah, so I mean, this one, I guess it came okay. Oh, and we have a palindrome completion day streak, uh, which is nice. I guess it happens every. Well, now it happens every like a hundred days or something, I guess, or something like this. Uh, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah, okay. So, so see, in the next Palom Day streak would be in a, in like three months or whatever, four, three and a half months. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, what's the complexity here, right? Well, well, uh, you know, the the total time is total time of everything together is just going to be each input times. Uh, time per input, right? And or number of inputs. I said that wrong. Number of inputs. A number of inputs. Uh, distinct inputs can be n uh, inputs is equal to n, and then time per input. What's time per input? Well, we have a for loop that goes for every word, and that uh, let's just call it w, right? So we have w number of words, and each word does an O of say l comparison up to where l can be up to 20 so is uh w times l so then now so total time is equal to n or o of n to be more you know this which is obviously you go just to o, o of n times uh w times l and of course total space is just o of n right because we only use all of one space per per input uh, that one I think is easier to see from here. But yeah, um, that's all I have for today. Let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy to good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.